Welcome to the Expert Hoc Template Builder. In this session, we'll design our first template. To open your templates, hit the Templates button in the ribbon. This will give you access to all the templates on the server. When you open a template for the first time, you will get a dialog asking you to start with an empty template, with an existing Word document, or to start from an existing template. Here, I'll just start with an empty template. Another way to open your templates is from the project console. And from the template section, just hit the design button on your template, and this will download the template to your hard disk. However, this will not give you the option to start with an existing document or template. In the Template Builder ribbon, we'll find some buttons um, for design mode, for language selection, for some extra functions and fields, a publish function to save your um, template back to the server, and a preview button to create a preview of your document using a sample, a sample that we've created on the data set. On the right hand uh, side, you will see the data set window that gives us access to all the fields that we have added to the data set before. You can click that open and we can see all the fields, all the elements, and also all the other entities that we've added, like the potential customer, which is an account. For this template, I'm just going to copy in some content and replace that with fields from our data set. So I have a mock-up quote template over here, and I'll copy that into my real template. And one by one, I will replace the fields by selecting an area within my template and finding the matching fields in my data set. Just select the field and double click, and that will insert the field at the position of the cursor. We call one of those fields a mapping, and mappings will show up in the mapping list. So one by one, I can put all fields into my template. From the potential customer, I'm going to choose the account, and the composite field for the address. I'm going to put in a date, the date of today, and I have also always access to that field in the metadata. That way you don't have to use words functionality for this, but you will always have the date that a document is generated. Remember, if you insert dates, numbers, currencies, you have to format them. For that, we'll go into the mapping list, select the fields we want to format, in this case, a dates field, and click the settings button or double click the field in the list. That will open the settings dialog for this specific mapping. We can select where the field gets its value from, and we can format it on the formatting tab. Other options, we can set the font, we can replace text, we can convert a field to an image, to a barcode, we can import other documents if needed, we can insert signatures, and there's all kinds of other text editing options available. To format a field, we'll select the proper format from the drop-down list, in this case, date. We'll select the locale, so a region, in this case we'll use English, and that gives us access to all kinds of English date times. I can save this combination of settings so that I can reuse it for another field. I'll call it the date style. Click OK to save the field. We can make text conditional by just selecting the text, going into the data set, selecting the field that we want to use in the condition. In this case, uh, the relationship uh, type should be equal to customer or to prospect to show this sentence. And if the relationship 
should be equal to customer, then we'll use the other sentence. Select the field, select the condition, and that will bring up the condition wizard where we can where we can check whether a field has a specific value that customer type code should for this sentence be equal to prospects. We'll do the same for the other sentence for the returning customers. Select the text, select the field, open the wizard. And here we're going to set the customer type code to customer. We can work with loops in our template. For line items, recurring items in our data set, we can build a loop. Let's find our line item in our data set under quote details. And under quote detail, I have an existing product which gives me access to all the product details from the product catalog. From there, I'll use the name. I'm going to map the quantity from my line item. And remember, that's a number, so I should format uh, that. I'm going to use the price per unit and the base amount of the line item. I'm going to format uh, my number and currency fields. I'm going to set that to a number, English, no decimals, and OK. You can also save that, of course, uh, as, uh, as a style. I will do that again for the currency fields. Go into the settings. Set that to currency. Choose my locale. Select a symbol. Select where I want to put the symbol. Set the number of decimals, and I'm going to use a thousand separator. Again, I'm going to save the formatting, this time as a currency style. This gives me the option to also use that setting for the base amount. So let's open that. Apply the style, select the style from the drop down, and select OK. We'll do the formula later. First, we're going to do the loop over the products. So we want this whole table row to repeat for each product that would be in our quote. So we'll select the table row, go to our data set, select in our data set the recurring item, which is quote detail. I have multiple quote details. And I'm going to select the loop button. This should work around a box around my table row. And that box indicates that the whole table row is repeating. You can see that in my mapping list too, I can see the icon of the loop, just as I can see icons for the conditions too. Let's create a formula for the total. So we can insert uh, expressions, functions, and the like. Comes with a function builder function wizard, a lot of functions that uh, mimic uh, like Excel functionality, for instance, like the sum. You can select that from the list and it will give me the option to choose an argument. So the field that I want to sum over here. I'm going to insert that as a field. So I'm 
select from the line item again that amount for the line item press ok press ok and it will build my function for me instead i can also type this in if i uh, if i want to so this function will um, calculate the sum of all the base amounts so all the amounts of each individual line item we're almost uh, done with our uh, quote template still have a date to fill wants me to format of course uh, the formula so let's uh, apply a style to that one more field the date field effective to date from the quote We need to format uh, that as a date field. There's a, a shortcut uh, also to apply formatting to a field if you have created uh, those styles. They're also available through the right mouse button and choose assign expert doc style. And lastly, we'll map the name of the owner As you can see, we also have some attributes uh, available, the name of the entity, the ID of the record, and the name of the record are always uh, available as shortcuts here as under the attributes. Please note in the field inspector, you can see the value that that field has in our sample record that we have created on the data set. So I can also use that attribute field to map the name of the owner let's create a, a preview because we should be uh, almost uh, done so we're going to do a final check quote id comes out fine we need to work on the address a little bit it looks like because that's all on one line my date is properly formatted, that's nice. I only see that sentence for the existing customer. I have a nice table with all my products, proper quantities, nicely formatted, prices nicely formatted, and the subtotal has been calculated too. My date comes through nice and john smith is the owner of the record that is correct one more thing to do i need to format my address this is a, a composite field so it pulls together all the address fields in uh, one uh, in one field for composite fields you just have to remember to go into your mapping list select that composite field go to the settings And on the formatting tab, we go to preserve formatting, select preserve formatted text, and set the format to plain text. This is one of those little tricks that you have to remember or just have to write down on a post it note. Um, you will notice after a week of working with uh, the template builder. Let's press OK and run another preview and see how our address comes out. Good, multiple address lines, nicely formatted. My numbers look good, my currencies look good. Might have to work on that line uh, a little bit, but uh, that, is, uh, that is minor. And I might want to, for instance, sort my loop on a uh, product name. So last thing, I'm gonna go into the settings, into the mapping list, and this time select the settings of the loop and set the sorting of the loop on, for instance, product name of the product.
Let's preview. And this looks good for starters. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to publish my template, leave a comment so my colleagues will know what uh, I have done to uh, the template. I'll call it uh, the first draft. Press OK, and this will create a new version of the template. Save that to the server, and that template should now be available in my flow. 